Hi, Phil from it here, and today we're gonna to be finally talking about tracked chair and microphone. You might've recently seen it showcased on uh, one of my tweets where I was basically calling out Rokoko. Hey, Rokoko. I thought of an, a way of how to get track chair and microphone without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Stay tuned to this video and you can follow this video how to get your very own tracked mic or chair using any steam vr compatible headset or tracking system what you're going to need is unity the link for unity is going to be down in the description down below so now that you have unity open what you're going to need to do is um, go to the unity asset store you're going to look for the steam vr plugin once again the link for this will be in the description down below and you're going to click open this in unity and then it's going to pop up with a window and it's going to open the package manager for you. And um, you're going to get the option to import or install the Steam VR plugin. Basically just say yes to any of the pop-ups that come with the Steam VR plugin. It's going to ask you something about Steam VR input and it's going to ask you to uh, generate uh, bindings and you want to make sure that you do that. Now that you have your Steam VR plugin enabled, what you need to do for your tracked objects is attach your tracker or controller to the object that you want to track. So in my case, I'm going to be tracking a microphone and a chair, and I'm going to be showing a clip just on the screen right here and where you can see where actually my trackers are located for my mic and chair. Now that you have your trackers attached to the physical objects, you're gonna choose what's gonna represent them in 3D in your Unity project. In my case, I'm using a chair and here I just uh, modeled uh, SM7B in Blender just to match the microphone that I have. And this is pretty close to the actual chair that I use when I'm normally at my computer. So there's gonna be two things that you're gonna wanna add. So the first thing you're gonna wanna add is a play space. What you're gonna do is right click and you're gonna create a empty game object. And then you can name this whatever you're gonna name it. And then you're gonna type in um, add component steam VR play area, just like this. And then it's gonna render um, a play area for it. And what I would recommend just to uh, zero it out like this. I already have um, a couple of these already added into my scene and um, you're going to see why these are going to be important in a moment. So we're going to work just with mainly the tracked chair as an example. So here I have a tracked chair and then I actually have the, the tracking point. So the point where I can move the chair as you see right here on the screen matching where the actual tracker is in real life. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to add component and in Steam VR, you're gonna add the Steam VR tracked object right there. So I already have that component enabled. What you're gonna do is when you have Steam VR open, so there's gonna be a couple things that you're gonna need to do here. You have the index as well as the origin. So the origin, what you're gonna do is, um, so I have this space set right here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it so that your play area space. So here, this is one of my play areas is set as the origin to this steam vr tracked object so basically what that does is that it kind of binds it to this play space for um it, it allows it to have much better tracking and secondly the index is the device number so kind of think about it like um which device it, it it's going to be tracked to so right now it's set to device three um i have a bunch of steam vr i have a bunch of things connected to my steam vr as you can see right now so let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. What you're gonna see on the screen right now, other than my hair going um, a little bit crazy, is you're gonna see that um, the Steam VR tracked object is not tracked properly. So what you should do is um, you can either kind of like guess which Steam VR tracked object it, or it's gonna be by looking at um, which tracked object it would be here just by counting it out, or you can just go through it one by one and just check to see which one's actually going to match your object. So when you press the play button, you'll be able to just change the device ID and it'll just instantly cycle between the tracked objects. For the purposes of this video, um, we're going to be demonstrating how you can get a tracked chair in microphone while only using BC face and whatever VR headset that you have. Now that you have your tracker or controller properly set to tracked objects, so in this case, a chair, you're going to just repeat the process again for the microphone. Now, if you have if you're having problems with positioning your tracked object all you need to do is not move the actual object itself because the object is always going to be snapping to your tracked controller or tracker 
So what you need to do is the reason why we actually set the, the origin as one of these spaces is now that you can, you can move the space back and forth like this, and it'll actually allow you to have more fine control over the tracker's location. So now that you've repeated that process for um, any other tracked object that you need. So in this case, it would be the tracked microphone that I have on screen. If you want to have both of these things tracked at the same time while using an application like VC face, what you're going to need to do is then go into your hierarchy and right click, and you're going to be adding a camera. And what you're going to do is you're going to add two separate cameras. When you place your camera, it's going to be able to see, as you can see right here, everything that's in the tracked space. Basically what you want is your avatar to be sandwiched in between your model as well as your microphone, instead of your model just being on top of it. How are we going to accomplish this? So what we can do is we want to have it set up in layers. We're going to click on my microphone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer. And what you can do is uh, when you click on the actual object, so you can click on the top part of the hierarchy for it, and then you can add a layer. And then here you can just type whatever you want. So in my case, I typed Mike, and then you go back to the object and then you can change the layer to Mike. And then you're going to also change the children for it too. And then you do the same thing for your other case. So in my case, it would be the tracked chair. Now with your two cameras, you're going to have two cameras overlapping. Camera one is going to be the chair cam. So I'm going to make it so that it only can see the chair. So you're going to go to the camera options and then you're going to add cut onto the culling mask. And then you're going to make it so that it can only see the chair. And you're going to do the same thing with the microphone in the camera settings. You're going to go to the culling mask and you're going to make it so that it only can see the microphone or whatever layer you set it to. Then on what you're going to do is you want both of these cameras to show on the screen at the exact same time. So how are we going to do this right now? This is how you're going to see it on the screen before you hit the play button. And what you're going to want to do is just, you can just click on one of the cameras and remember these cameras are in the exact same location as you can see here, but they are seeing different things. And what you're going to do is you're going to move one camera 0.5 or whatever value that you find works best for you in the X axis. And it's basically what it's going to do. It's going to shift where the camera is going to appear um, in the application itself. Now you're um, all set. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to file, save, and then file and build. And you're just going to build your application out. And this will work with any tracked object that you want to have and um, how many layers you, you want. You can add as many cameras as you want. It's just, I, I don't recommend doing too many different cameras. Next, you're going to be loading your model in VC face like you normally would. So in this case, um, even though I'm using VR for full tracking right now, you do not need to use uh, full tracking in VC face. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can check out a video that's going to be popping up on the screen right here. But this will work the same if you're just using your webcam and elite motion, a webcam on its own. Um, an iPhone webcam and elite motion or any combination of those things. So once you have your favorite VTubing application, I, I personally would recommend VC face. You're going to be opening your brand new created application with the track chair and mic or whatever tracked objects you have. And you can see my application right here where it's reflecting my track chair and tracked microphone. Now that you have your app open and you have your VTuber model added into um, your into OBS or Streamlabs OBS or whatever you're using, I, I really do recommend that you use regular OBS. And if you don't know how to set up um, your very first VTuber stream, I recommend checking out this video that's going to be popping up in the corner. What we're going to be doing in OBS is this, we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, trickery. You're going to be going into the plus sign and you're going to be adding a game capture source and you can name it whatever you want to name it. And you're going to pick a specific window. You're going to be choosing your application and um, you should turn off capture cursor. And then what it's going to do, it's going to move your application at the very top. Since I've already added it, I'm just going to take it away. Here I have my VC face as you see right here. And then what I did is on the very bottom, I have the chair. And uh, how I only have the chair visible is you're going to go to filters and you're going to add the chroma key so you can see the full source of it on the screen right here. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to go to right click that source and you're going to go to transform, edit transform, and then you're going to crop out the side of um, the chair 
um, in my case, the crop out the side um, that has the object that I don't want to see just for this chair that's going to be behind me. So I'm going to be cropping out the left side that has the microphone in it, as you can see here. What I do is copy this and then paste a copy of this application, or you can re-add it. And then here I have the a copy of that same source. The only difference here is that in this transform, I have it cropped so that you can only see part of my microphone. I originally had it so that it would have the full microphone like this, but I, I didn't really like that um, because I found that the arm was getting in the way. So I've cropped it on both sides. And as you can see, it allows me to have um, VC face with my track chair. And as you can see, um, it works like it normally should. I'll have my chair here and I have my track microphone. And then all you need to do is just um, make sure that you're running this very low powered app. I hope you found this video somewhat helpful. And if you have uh, any questions, please feel free to leave it in the video description down below. Also, I stream on Twitch and um, you can catch me out there and have a great conversation. And thank you again to my patrons on Patreon that you're going to be seeing on the screen right here. I couldn't do um, what I do without the support that you give me. So thank you so much, everyone. Bye bye.